Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we're going to start off by focusing on Joule. We do have a portion of the mission that needs to come back to Kerbin in order to fulfill the contracts for recovery of the Kerbal and also recovery of the Kerbal's craft, Melrick's craft. But Kerbin needs to be behind Joule by about 48 degrees before it's the right time to come back and right now it's ahead of Joule. So We've got uh, the better part of a Kerbal year before we can do that, which means that we need to deal with Jewel Station. We don't want the return vehicle to be in a situation where it's going to get flung by Tylo or something out into interplanetary space, uh, but we also don't want it encumbering the scanner portion of the mission. So there's the return craft, which is the forward part, and then the station, if you will, uh, which is back here. And we have this scanner. So this portion would like to get into a polar orbit around some moons in order to do the scanning. As many moons as possible. Uh, so that's not a convenient situation for the return craft to be in, and we don't want to lug it around. It's just extra mass that's not doing anything. So the thing is, if we just pull our orbit down manually, we've got some delta V. Um, well, let's see, it costs 800 to pull it down all that way, and that's not the most efficient thing. We would like to get some help from some moon in order to pull it down. Maybe Tylo could... Tylo can't really help pulling it down. Leif could. So if we could finagle some sort of Leif encounter. But by that time, we've already pulled it down. So, hmm. Okay, I've got something weird here. We've got a Val periapsis. And then a, a Leif encounter. That brings us into a lower and somewhat safer orbit, though we'll still need to do something. Though I don't know how much it's really benefiting us. Let's see. Ooh, a double Leif encounter. There's a limit to how much we can do that before it crashes us into Jewel here. That... I don't really want to double, but it the second one does bring us lower. So we'll take a look at that. This is fancy stuff here. Okay, so after two days and 16 hours... Oh, things have changed. What? Uh, oh, there's an extra Tylo encounter after... Oh, no, right now, if we uh, keep our orbit as is, we have a Tylo encounter. That pushes us up instead of down, so we don't want to do that. This needs to be done somewhat precisely. Oh, there's some jewel storms, some lightning flashes. Okay, and go. Another thing is we would like to transfer as much of the science into the return pod as possible. So if we do the Val and Lath encounters and get some science from them, that'd be good because then we can shove all that science into the return pod and we won't have to re-rendezvous with the return pod to get that science in there. Okay, within 0.1 meters per second, but let's see. Um, it doesn't look like we've got the lathe... Well, we've got part of a lathe encounter here, but it's not doing what we want it to do. It's doing the opposite, so we need to refine that somewhat. Ooh, that'd be nice. Oh, can we stop there? Okay, it's too sensitive. <laughs> it's too sensitive. Okay, that's more of what I wanted. Uh, that's too much inclination, though. Okay, well, we'll see. Um, we'll have to lift that up a bit and alter the inclination. But first, let's deal with Tylo. Oh, sorry, not Tylo, Val. So we've got a 42 kilometer Val periapsis, which should get us a lot of science. Since we'll get low over Val, I hope. And somewhere mid-course, we're going to have to correct the inclination and help the lathe encounter up a bit. I mean, after Val, it seems like we're still flat. I don't think Val is doing a whole lot to our orbit. It might boost us up, actually. But it's ending up giving us the lathe encounter, so I didn't mind because I wanted the science. 
Okay, so high over bow time. Let's turn off the RCS. Okay, so probably we need Elon to get the science out again. And download data. EVA report. And take data. Take data. Take data. All right. Okay, we've got the crew report for high over Val. Right. Now, all the new science. Okay, got the new science. And Elon can grab that so that we've got them all clear for the low over Val situation. Okay, well, we've got 25 data thingamajigs stored in there right now. Uh, actually, let's have Elon EVA grab all those and put them inside again because we want the crew report to lower Val. So there's Laith, there's Jewel, and there's Val. All right, look at all that science. Of course, we can do the gravity scan over some of the other biomes, but for now, we're okay. Val's an interesting looking moon, that's for sure. Okay, is this low over Val? Yes, near Val. And EVA report. And let's just grab all the things. Good thing that even though they gave us extra EVA propellant, oh, um, a way to add extra EVA propellant, it still replenishes automatically when we enter the pod. Oh, oh, ah. Because that's convenient. Okay. All right, so Val is done for now. That's what we wanted to do around Val. Now let's work on the lathe situation. We'll get out into Jewel space again. Otherwise, it might be a little bit finicky trying to fine-tune the approach. Okay, so I'll just have a mid-course adjustment. That's too much of a correction. Um, maybe it's okay if we have inclination. Like, it's better than doing that much of a correction. Interesting that an apparent re-encounter gets us flatter, is that right? Anyway, but uh, we'll just do a minor correction in order to ensure that we do not get into Leif's atmosphere. And then we'll have to lift our resulting orbit up so it doesn't hit Jewel. Hopefully that won't cost too much. But yeah, it's weird that we're so in line with Leif's orbit coming in, but somehow we managed to meet up with it askew. Strange. Let me see. It's probably still bad to change inclination here. Uh, I feel like that's really crashing us into Jewel though. Afterwards, how much is it gonna cost to pull us up? A lot. Um, hmm. How much to just park everything in Lathe Orbit for? Well, it's not ideal, especially since we're not going polar. Not a whole lot to park, but we're not going to be able to do scanning like that. As it is, it wouldn't cost us that much to save us from the jewel crash. So it's probably better to just leave things be as we have it right now, even with the inclination. I keep trying to correct the inclination, but it's not worth it. Okay, there's Lathe. That's a hard edge to that shadow, huh? Okay, so uh, I think, did we clear all the signs yet, or log gravity data? Yeah, we did. Okay, we've got all the things. Elon can EVA, get the EVA report. Grab all the other things. So it gives us all those notifications. Okay, so that's the high over stuff done. All right, here we go. 
our close-up with lathe, our first close-up with lathe. Probably others will occur. Okay, well, we should be low over now, or near. Report, keep. I wonder if this is, uh, as we get near periapsis, it'd be a good time to adjust our jewel orbit to like boost up around jewel or something. That'll be just outside jewel's atmosphere. Looks like retrograde, but a little bit to the north. So if we wanted to get Leif's help here, nah, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Okay. Elon time. EVA. Keep. Take data. Take data. Take data. Okay. And we'll grab the stuff in the pod again. And actually this time we'll transfer it all into the return pod now. And store experiments. Okay, so all that stuff is being safely stowed. I'll just wait until all the notifications finish just in case. Okay, so we are outbound from Lathe. The inclination might seem like a problem for encountering the moons with the science vessel, for, with the scanning vessel, I should say, or station, whatever you want to call it. But since we want to get into a polar orbit around them, this will actually potentially help with adding some inclination as we approach. If we come into the moon's SOI, any of the moon's SOI flat, uh, we'll probably not be in a polar orbit and need to correct for that. Okay, 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 okay. Whip. That's enough. Well, there's re-encountering Leif again, so obviously if we really want to make this thing safe, we're going to have to pull it down at periapsis to ensure that it does not encounter Leif. I think that's low enough, but just in case, we'll give it a little bit of buffer. So we'll expend that 200 meters per second to keep the return craft safe and then let it go. Oh, it's been using its liquid... Uh-oh, we don't have that much left. Oh, I got fooled. I got fooled. I thought I had crossfeed off, but maybe when we redocked it... I have crossfeed off here. Why was it using this fuel at all? That's not fair. I had... This enable crossfeed is... I guess we have to have it disabled on both. Well, now we have less. That's gonna make things difficult. We have 930, that's 973, so... And that's before we do this burn. Well, here we go. Is this like near Jewel? Have we done that before? Apparently not. I'm not going to transfer it into the return craft for the near jewel. We'll save that for when we attach a science lab to this. Though we can transmit the crew report. Okay, I think that EVAing while we were running the engine probably messed up our maneuver. I don't know. Yeah, I think we might. Have, I think that's it. We've already done it. Um, we should test that theory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a maneuver here and then increase the orbit number and just see that. Oh, wait, there was a lathe encounter there. Okay, so that's not good enough. Let's continue burning a bit. Well, it's clear for a substantial number of orbits, so I think it's good now. All right, so Melrick, Melrick's craft are up there. We've got all that fuel there. We are going to let go of it now. And now it's just Elon. This craft will have RCS forward. It doesn't have much RCS left, but that's fine. And it should have enough to get back. 
probably more than enough, but we want to be safe about it. So now this at least has to get into orbit around one target, and Lathe is the easiest, and also probably the place that we most want to uh, scan. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Let's see. That's almost polar, if it's being honest with me. Uh, it's so touchy, though. Well, it's a maneuver in eight minutes. That's pretty crashy. Could be bad for Elon. Could be good for Elon. We'll see. Let's see if this is a good idea. We need to go prograde. It says really limited electric charge. Okay, well, at least we can replenish the electric charge with the nerve. Yeah, I don't trust this. It doesn't have a burn time. Something very suspicious about all this. And we don't have a delta V reading anymore because of the engine plate. Okay, let's see what's going on. It's flickery and awkward. Uh, oh, it was looking pretty good there. I can't see what's going on now, but it was looking pretty good. It's not showing me anything now, though. Well, let's go over there and see. Well, it's making it hard for me to plan anything, because it keeps taking away the encounter. I don't know how much it's going to take to make orbit around it, whether I should get closer. I don't want to get there and crash into it. It looks like it's not on this orbit. It looks like it's on the next orbit or something. Okay, so it was because we had to pass. So maybe we can do another correction. I think that that's us leaning at one side, so maybe we don't want to get that close. I think this is close enough for the scanner. 700. We, I don't know if we have that. Let me try and estimate my delta V manually. So we're 17.77 tons. And I believe we have 2.785 tons of liquid fuel right now. Assuming my calculation based on the liquid fuel units is correct. We have 1,337 units, uh, 1,337 meters per second left by my calculations. So we can make orbit around, around Lathe if that's correct. We do have the mod propellant as well, but we have no way of using it. We really should have just dumped the mod propellant somehow. We have no RCS ports on here. It was just to replenish other things. It's important to have a connection back, otherwise we are not going to be able to transmit the scanner data. Okay, now if we try and run the scanner, it'll tell me what the requirements are. 50 and 1500. So that should be okay. Polar orbit. I really regret that on the orbit display here, they didn't bother to put the inclination at all. But it looks polarish to me. So, I'm going to assume that that's good enough. Alright, well, that'll be enough for the requirement. I don't want to overdo it just in case we have to fix something or another. Okay, and, well, that should be good enough. So our delta V calculation was correct. Let's see if we can run this oral survey. It is uploading data. Uh-oh. We're going to run out of electric charge. Okay, we're going to need to set to allow partial. Allow partial? Or maybe that was not allow partial. Okay, uh, I always, so it is on allow partial now. Let's try to perform an oral survey. Yeah, there's not enough electric charge, even though our solar panels are facing the sun. You use it too fast. Okay, well, it says done, and 80 science added. Let's see if we get the effect that we want. Well, there ain't a whole lot of ore. <laughs> there really, really isn't. 
We got some here at a 0% cutoff and some here. That's a 0% cutoff. Uh, there's a little bit here. But then if we go to a 10% cutoff, it fades. And then by 20% cutoff, that little bit and that little bit are still there. Let's see. I guess that's not too bad. So 50% cutoff. So there and there. But it's rough. It's rough as far as the ore is concerned on lathe. So not the best place to do the mining. And right now we are basically out of fuel. We probably can't go anywhere else with this. So Elon is now on a lathe station. Let's uh, rename vessel. Lathe station. Okay. So that's done. And we are hanging out with the return vessel until Kerbin gets into the right position. So let's turn to our mission around Drez and try and get to the deployable science that we had left behind there. Okay, so here we are again with the Drez bus and this time we are lined up. I time warped and we are lined up with the Drez base and it is barely in daylight but I think it'll work out. So we're gonna separate off the Drez bus and get down there and hopefully we will deploy some science properly this time unlike what we did on the moon but we'll see I'm still not totally sure on the deployable science situation um, we actually need to go further south looks like we should have probably done it on the previous orbit Dres rotates pretty quickly actually okay well that's a landing solution of some kind All right, uh, make sure it's not the, yeah, that's the unfinished rover is over there. Though it's it's a finished rover now, but, well, it's missing an antenna now. Now it needs other repairs because of what we did to it. Okay, let's see. All right, let's correct a little bit more. Okay. It looks like we're going to be ending up right on top of it. Let's see. Okay, well, it's probably close enough. We're not anticipating having to put anything on. So, plop. Okay, so now, engineer for the solar panels, and then somebody said scientist for the science deployables. So, okay, we will do that. I guess we should do science. So, got that. Got that. And plant a flag. Sidwise at Drez Base. Still don't have anything to say. The flag always flopping down is very demoralizing, I have to say. Okay, which one had the science? This one did. Okay, one at a time. Okay, so. We're going to just temporarily stow the parachute and gonna take. Is that a solar panel thing? I think this is a solar panel thing. Oh, I can't fit it in. Okay, um, fine. You out. Solar panel thing. Right. Okay. Plop. Yeah. Um, place part. Uh,. Is it going? Oh, it's deploying. It's deploying. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's three solar panels. I'm sure Sidwise can do the science ones too, but I don't know if it's the best thing for Sidwise to do. Experiment control station is deploying. All right. That looks. Well, at least it looks like it. Oh, I guess the comms unit too. Okay. So that. Has six power available and needed two. This uh, needed one. I don't know what it means power units produced. Why would it? Anyway, it's powered. Okay, just short of being able to get in there. There we go. Board. 
All right, and so DAF tree. So which science is this? Let's see. I think it's a goo, maybe. Oh no, there's a seismometer. Science rate 35%. Well, Daftry's only a level one scientist, so what can we expect? Anyway, so all right, that's fine. Okay, this is the goo. Well, science something P per hour. Well, hopefully it's worth it. But as I understand, these deployable sciences, they're not that lucrative. Okay, and board. So I don't know whether we're going to get anything out of these sciences. But it's got two experiments connected. And it's got a signal strength, barely, to the KSC. So maybe, maybe we'll get something out of it, but... And this is interesting, limited crew control over here. So I guess this isn't relaying back. But we'll leave them on the surface for now. I don't know if... Uh, we, yeah, we don't really need to bring them back up to the relay because we have no way of bringing them back home yet. Or the relay could potentially push them home. Let me just see how much delta V it has. But it's probably better to just let everybody hang out for a sec. Oh, we don't have any delta V reading because we've got an engine plate. Okay, well, I'm not going to calculate that out right now. Though it seems to have a lot of liquid fuel. But yeah, so we've gotten things done. And probably next time I'll focus on bringing the crew around Jewel back home except for Elon. And then we'll move on from there. We've gathered a lot of science there, and we'll see if it all comes back safely. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.